Yes. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Okay, so thanks. I'm, I'm excited to be here uh, and, and sorry about the technical issues. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit today about REDCap, sort of the origin story of REDCap, but also uh, some stuff that we've been working on uh, specifically over the last two or three years called uh, Clinical Data Interoperability Services that we're really excited about, uh, basically allowing sharing of EHR data into REDCap uh, in, in a fairly uh, lightweight and frictionless way for research teams. Uh, before, I, before I sort of launch into that discussion, though, I want to give a little bit of the REDCap origin story for people that aren't, uh, aren't familiar with REDCap. It, it's a platform that we created here at Vanderbilt uh, back in 2004, re really to help um, diverse researchers working diverse uh, clinical and translational research problems and, and studies, help them do a, do a better job sort of thinking, uh, thinking about devising uh, and, and implementing data collection plans for, uh, for studies. Uh, at the time, uh, we were building everything one at a time for individual research projects. We knew with HIPAA security rules coming down around uh, uh, ne the need for audit trails and security and so forth that, that we weren't going to be able to sort of meet that need do doing uh, projects one at a time. So, so we thought, you know, a better approach would be to build a common platform built on uh, metadata principles so that, uh, so, so that we'd be able to sort of create uh, solutions and, and empower research teams to create their own data management uh, plans, uh, implement those without need so, for programmers. So it's a no-code uh, type of uh, customized, customizable uh, data management platform. Uh, we started with case report forms and, you know, making sure that uh, research coordinators at the time could, uh, could, could sort of uh, build and, and operate with, uh, with, with electronic forms and, and all the validation and the bells and whistles that are associated as such uh, would, be, would be sort of baked in and built in. Uh, we also were very serious about the HIPAA security rules and so made sure that we put in lots and lots of audit trails and data logging features. Uh, and and then uh, you know at the uh, at the advice of our researchers that we were working with, uh, realized that we needed to also make it really really easy to get the data out uh, in uh, in various statistical packages, including uh, R of course. And so that was sort of the origin of REDCap. It worked pretty well at Vanderbilt, and so we started talking about that at uh, national meetings. Uh, one of which a, a colleague from uh, a would be colleague from the University of Puerto Rico. I expressed interest, and so we started sharing with uh, with the uh, department there. One of the nice things about uh, Puerto Rico was my collaborator, my key collaborator there, was a biostatistician, and he taught me a, a lot about sort of how to get the data out and uh, and and customize for import into R. That was sort of the origin story of Redcap, and and as well the origin story of the consortium. We wanted to. To create a uh, you know scalable model to be able to disseminate and share at no cost to academic, nonprofit, and government organizations, and and as of this morning, we're at about 6,000 institutions across 147 countries. The the really cool thing about that though is not a lot of dots on the map. Uh, the really cool thing about that is we've always sort of devised and thought about Redcap in 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 the in in a philosophy that used systems get better. And so the way that works with the consortium is is the the infinity diagram that you see in front uh, front front of us with this screen, and, and that you know we we're all always listening to our research community, not just at Vanderbilt but across that consortium. We we listen, learn, and prioritize features. We then go and build and test those and disseminate them out to that larger uh, uh, red cap consortium. Local experts, uh, you know, uh, decide which which features and functions they want to deploy for their local research uh, research uh, community. Uh, they then deploy that out, train train the users, support the users, uh, and, and and typically in those exchanges, that's where the suggestions and uh, for for new features come from. And then we just kind of complete that virtuous cycle. We. Um, we release uh, feature function features and functions on a monthly basis uh, to that REDCap consortium, and so you know if you think about that that trip around that infinity diagram once per month, we've been working about 16 years. So so you know a lot a lot of uh, researcher derived uh, or re researcher informed innovation that's happened over that time. Almost from the very beginning, though. This was a question that we got both at Vanderbilt and across the consortium. Can you help me get my data out of the electronic health record into my research database? 
that that's really hard. And particularly 16 years ago, it was really hard. Uh, and you had to sort of get into conversation about standards and being able to sort of get uh, get the data that you want mapped to the to, to the way that you want it. Uh, the the fact that you know EHR vendors were were, were exchanging information and or not, yeah, in very standard uh, in, in very uh, bespoke uh, ways. Uh, but with the uh, the advent of fire uh, technology, which is a relatively new standard, but it's mandated by the ONC. Uh, to, to be used with electronic health record and vendor systems. And so the, the advent of, of FHIR really uh, about five years ago, six years ago, really allowed us to operate in a, in a better way and, and to build this as a scalable solution that can be exported outside of just our, our Vanderbilt system and our Vanderbilt EHR. Um, we published a paper on this uh, last year in, in September. It's called REDCap on Fire Clinical Data Interoperability Services. And that paper has the figure that, that uh, you know, I'll kind of walk through now. In, in the old days, uh, you know, to get data out of the EHR into your EDC system, you know, it was basically open up a browser, open up two browsers, uh, do, do a chart review and some copy and paste. Uh, before Fire, we built, uh, we did build some API driven platforms to, to allow folks like us, uh, you know, who had a, a research data warehouse at your institution, to, to be able to sort of build, build into the API of REDCap and create some uh, transfer of functionality. But again, what we found was we could do that at Vanderbilt, for maybe five or six or 10, uh, you know, other institutions sort of had both the data warehousing capability as well as the, the, the API uh, programming teams to sort of pull that off. With FHIR, we're able to do it much, uh, much easier and we don't have to sort of rely on a, on a bunch of internal infrastructure. Uh, and, and I'll kind of get to the well. How do you get it? How do you get it turned on? Uh, you know, with a particular EHR in just a moment. Um, when we when we thought about the the use cases of why people were asking uh, us to get uh, EHR data into Redcap, re really we focused first on what we call clinical data pool. Uh, and and you know maybe the best way to think about that would be a prospective study where I've got case report forms that that are sitting there with. Uh, with, with uh, expectation of structured data coming into them for a particular visit, for a particular patient, for a particular lab. Uh, that's a really good use case, but, but when we rolled that out at Vanderbilt and said, hey, we've, we've got this functionality in REDCap, come and get it, about 50% of our folks said, yeah, that's good, but that's not what we want. What we want, uh, and then they would kind of describe what they want, and, and, it, and we realized it was, it was less of a prospective clinical trial with case report with associated case report forms and more more like a data mart or, or a registry type project so eventually we built both of those into the uh, in, into the features of this uh, this framework and technology we call one clinical data pool we call the other one clinical data mart uh, as I mentioned we are looking we are using uh, fire standards and there are a lot of fire resources out there but, but one of the things that we found was that uh, that, that uh, most of you know m many of our most requested uh, data data uh, mapping and exchange uh, structure comes really from from only a handful. You know, patient would would give you things like demographics, medi medication is uh, self-explanatory, observation uh, resource for labs and vital signs, conditions uh, and, and allergies, as you see on the the first column or the second column. Uh, but but you know, as we've evolved, we've also added recently, uh, you know, the ability to support R four which is another uh, sort of the, the next version of uh, fire uh, and some of the resources there that we've, we've uh, been able to pull in our encounter immunizations, uh, more, more specific around core characteristics with ob observations and adverse events. There are many more, uh, you know, fire resources that, that can be mapped and sort of utilized. And I'll speak to some of those in a moment, but, but again, you know, the really high points, most of the, most of what the researchers uh, are doing in clinical and translational research, at least uh, in, in the in the capacity that that we typically work with REDCap, you know, are, are encapsulated here. Um, at Vanderbilt, you know, I'll talk a little bit about the consortium at large in just a moment. But at Vanderbilt, I checked this morning, and we have 132 projects using that uh, that that uh, clinical data pool or the prospective clinical trial or study. Uh, 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 integration services uh, toolkit 
for, for the registry use case, we've got 54. And you can kind of see there on top the data values adjudicated in, into or imported into both. You know, 587,000 uh, data points, uh, you know, for, for those 132 projects in the prospective uh, study study model and 54 million in, in, in the registry. And, and, you know, I think the way, the way I, a couple of things really make me happy about this. Uh, number one, uh, we've built this to be much like everything else we try to build in REDCap and that is to be self-service. So, so I have a, I have a very light support team that helps researchers sort of actually do that mapping of fields from the EHR into REDCap. Uh, they, they just typically go, you know, we, we do a small amount of training and then we put them to work, uh, you know, on their own particular projects. So, so the fact that we have this many using that lightweight support model makes me really happy because I know it's scalable. Uh, the other thing is looking at those, those numbers, you know, even if we just take the one project type, 587,000 data points, think, think about the, the work and effort uh, and the efficiency and the accuracy uh, gained from being able to sort of do those real-time data pools ra rather than having that copy and paste method that that uh, that, that is typical. Uh, if I look at, uh, you know, the types of data that are coming in, uh, this is for last month, last full month of July. Again, in Vanderbilt, these are the, these are the, the, the quantities of, of data uh, in the CDP model up top, as well as the uh, CDM model uh, down below. I should say that the patients, uh, I can't hover here, but you know, the patients in the, uh, in, the, in the registry model still are somewhere in the 10,000 range. So, so it looks very small, but, but that's in comparison. So you can kind of see people, people use those, uh, uh, th those mappings and collect different types of data for those types of projects, as, you, as, you, as one could imagine. Um, we do share this out. Uh, you know, we've worked with Epic. We're an Epic institution at Vanderbilt. And so we, we sort of built it out to be agnostic to what uh, EHR we're using, but, but it works easiest in Epic. And the reason is we work with Epic to get, um, to get this, uh, this into a, you know, their, their app gallery. Uh, I think that's what they call it. Uh, Epic. Yeah, I think it's app, app gallery or, or the, the app store. But, but anyway, being able to sort of have a health IT and individual at your institution to click the right buttons to sort of get things set up uh, fa fairly easily, that, that's something that works well and is easy in Epic. We're not, an, we're not a Cerner site and, and Epic and Cerner app stores work a little bit differently. So, so the installation and the, 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 the setup of this with Cerner is a little bit harder with Epic, but we do have five sites that are, that are running. This is a little bit of an old slide, but we've got you know somewhere in the neighborhood of 35, 40 Epic institutions that are live and and probably still uh, you know it's growing list, but probably still in the 50 to 60 uh, institutions that are on their way to being productive and live. So just a few more slides, and we'll kind of open up to questions if there are any. But you know how do you start using CDIS and RedCap? First first step is to talk to your RedCap administrator because it you know it's something that basically they're going to have to broker on the RedCap side. Uh, it's a little bit different than most REDCap services in that you just can't turn it on and it, and it stands alone. You have to have some help from your health IT uh, group. It's not it's not a heavy lift. And again, if you're in the in the epic epic world, uh, you know it's it's really quite easy from a technical standpoint to sort of download something from the from the app market uh, looks like and and, uh, and and apply that locally. That said. You know permissions and governance. You know it's the, the the easy part's the technical. The harder part is getting getting the right governance and the, the the right folks to sort of okay this at the institution level and figuring out you know how you want to sort of deploy it around which projects and and, and under what conditions. But technically, it's pretty easy. Uh, then you know once those uh, fire services are enabled for Redcap, you know it's a fairly simple process where in Redcap you just sort of put in some some secret tokens into the uh, into the Redcap console as, as an administrator, but but then it's just enabling uh, these services for an individual project. And I've, I've just got one really quick screen here that kind of shows a little bit of the the, the Redcap screens for sort of uh, do, starting the mapping process for uh, for for an individual study. Uh, again, it's not not rocket science, but but uh, you know it does take some due diligence from from a research quarter coordinator, somebody that knows the data. You can see here I'm just searching for HDL and seeing what what's available in my EHR at Vanderbilt. The next step would be to click this one and then map it to my RedCap field. 
Uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there's lots and lots of, uh, of resources. We typically uh, go for the ones that are more scalable, more usable, rather than trying to sort of boil the ocean. But there's a lot more room for ev evolution uh, as we go forward. Uh, I want to give some acknowledgments to a lot of folks uh, on our team, not just on the Red Cap team, but across uh, you know our, e our uh, uh, Epic team as well as uh, you, know, you know others within the institution. This has definitely been a team effort. Uh, and, and I want to thank you for uh, the opportunity to speak. So I think at this point I can go back and, and field any questions if there are any. Thank you very much. That was, uh, I'm eagerly hoping that we can uh, get that implemented at Mayo. Um, have you run into institutions that have said no? This is concerns of security or clogging up the data, um, IT? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 I mean, we definitely see that there is, you know, there's 35-ish that are, that are alive now and 50 or 60 that are, that are perhaps on their way. I mean, I'm really not out there trying to say, you know, to Mayo Clinic or anybody else, you, you know, you need to do this. So, so, you know, that, that feedback probably wouldn't come to me. Uh, but mm -hmm. but we do see that you know it does take time to sort of get it up and running. Uh, we do have office hours that we we you know we provide from Redcap and and you know invite people to bring their security team or or their health IT team or their Redcap team to to those office hours. Uh, but yeah, I mean it, it's it's yeah. I, I think I think I'll just leave it at that. It's always a process. <laughs> Are there other questions that people have? Guess another question then is, where do you see REDCap going next? Uh, you know, the very next thing that we're going to deploy, uh, probably within the next couple of months, is we are we're about to sort of roll out some new functionality around document storage. Uh, we, we've always had document storage in Redcap, but uh, but but I'm really excited about some of these new features that that allow uh, uh, sort of folders within folders within folders and thinking about sort of sort of uh, keeping the data ke keeping track of data that are not structured, but but you know being able to sort of shoot in uh, images or ECG waveforms, etc. Uh, being able to do that using the API, I, th I think we'll we'll create some new. Uh, we'll 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 watch really smart people doing really clever things with that functionality. Uh, I think we'll continue to do. I actually think the CDIS stuff that we're talking about here. We we're just finishing a study. We haven't published it yet, but we've got some great uh, great metrics around time efficiency and even data quality. Uh, for for this versus uh, when compared to a study where we weren't using it, but we're using traditional methods. I, I think that will create some good buzz and create some good ideas going forward for, for next generation in this work, including uh, maybe risk-based monitoring, which which I think is a, is, is a really cool use case. Um, and then there's a question in terms of the, Part 11? Well, just also just in terms of the process for getting the CDIS implementation at your institution. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, th I think I cut out uh, I cut out a slide I meant to include, and that had a, a link to um, uh, that that had a link to. You know, for more information, here's where those office hours are. I, I think the way I would really start that, though, would be just to go to your REDCap administrator. And, and okay. we've got all kinds of community resources for those folks. Uh, you know, let them know you're interested. And, and uh, that, that might, might encourage them to sort of move forward with, uh, with, with the communications. We have office hours as well as lots of uh, documentation artifacts around it we can share. Well, there are a few more questions, but I think we need to move on at this point. Um, maybe 
yeah. answer in the chat. Uh, there's some questions under the Q and A session section. Will do. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.